for a wee natter with Jenny and Mark Steele on Bo Radio. Hey, up, it is indeed a wee natter. I'm Mark Steele, and across the table from me is Jenny Steele, and we are joining you on the day that is. Mother's Day, mm. and if you've not got a gift, it isn't too late. Although, in all honesty, I don't, I don't think certainly my mother. I don't know about yours, dear listener, because we don't have the same mother. And this is <laughs> a bit like one of those genealogy TV shows where you find out, oh, it turns out you're late. It's a Jeff down the road or something like that. Yeah. I, I, so long as none of that sort of thing's going on, I don't think my mum would appreciate the best of Engelbert Hungperdink on CD with a 99p petrol station sticker on it. <laughs> no. so, I, I'm assuming that about my mum. I'm also going to assume about your mum as well, dear listener. I suppose we could help you out, couldn't we? Yes. Yes. And the way to do it, we've got to get the right mood music, haven't we? We have, yes. Maybe something a bit like this. No, 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 no. No? You shouldn't be playing that to your mother. Oh, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's sending very much the wrong message. <laughs> Jeez. But on the upside, we will play your request. So if you've sent one, great, we'll get it on the wireless. If you haven't, do get in touch. We will be playing your songs for your mum mm. to cover for the fact that you didn't get a gift even from the petrol station. <laughs> Where's the gift? <laughs> <laughs> but first, the post bag has arrived. And last week, we asked you, if you woke up tomorrow as an expert in a brand new skill, what would you want it to be? And a couple of you have been in touch. I've got Sandra Owen would like to be an ice skater if she woke up to a new skill. Oh, an ice skater? An ice skater, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Janet Roberts saying my new skill would be to be able to paint some lovely pictures. Now, Janet, if your art skill is anything like mine... You've got this vision in your head of what it's going to look like. It's going, I'm going to do this art. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to create this picture. Mm. It's like Michelangelo level stuff. But the skill level isn't there. And it looks like something a kid's put together as part of a school project or something like that. And I'm not talking like the art kids. I'm talking to like the science kids that have been forced to do art up to a certain point in school. Ah. That, that's where the quality dies off, unfortunately. I haven't got a new skill, but I want to read out Maureen Stott's message. All right. Because Maureen says she did listen to the show uh, last Sunday, last Sunday's show, and it's a change, she says, from watching TV and listening to, li- <laughs> <laughs> listening to live chat. Keep up the good work, you two. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. There, there's a mistake, right? <laughs> Maureen, you've made the mistake of praising us. The, 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 <laughs> yeah. problem, the problem is we've got an ego that's just going to inflate, inflate, inflate. And we've got this tiny little bungalow that we're broadcasting from here on Bow Radio and Fatsham Town Radio too, right? Yeah. We've got this tiny, tiny little bungalow. If the ego inflates too much, we can't even get in the door. Yeah, but somebody else said that, that it's like listening to two old friends as well. It's really nice, <laughs> the Emphasis isn't it? on the old bit, was it? They, they mean you more. Obviously, they don't mean me. <laughs> yeah, another slightly different topic. Samantha Palmer was in touch saying, Twinkle, I loved it when I was young. I remember having the 72 and 73 annuals and reading them over and over again. Because that was kind of the thing when you were a kid. You, you didn't get a lot of toys or a lot of books or anything like that. So whatever you did get, you just used over and over and over till it wore out. Mm, yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah, so I didn't get any dolls, though. My twinkle <laughs> was my doll because I've had, oh. I have had—I got five brothers and we were too poor. She could, I was the last one, so they couldn't afford to buy me dollies. So my twinkle was my doll. Other than that, I just played with my brother's cars and made, like, mud roads in the soil in my dad's back garden in his flower beds got on his nerves and for some reason she hasn't taken up uh, motoring as an interest no. you, you, you're not a mechanic or anything <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's my other saying I had the twinkle comic too kept them all in a big pile for a long time I remember feeling devastated when I found out they'd been thrown away oh. and if I could have mastered a skill it would be to have the perfect sense of direction especially when driving mine is rubbish I could do with that actually Whereas, weirdly, I'm the complete opposite. I'm the sort of person that goes somewhere, never been there in my life, and I'll turn up and somebody will ask me, where, where is the blah? They just oh, expect yeah, me yeah. to know. It's like I know. I even went to South of France, first time going, <laughs> yeah. going down there, right? Um, my, my French knowledge, not great, but I picked up that they were looking for the beach. For some reason, they asked the guy, not even native to the area, not even native to the language, to point out where they needed to go. And you've got the other thing that people always ask you as well, didn't you? All right, what's that? Can you reach that off the top shelf for uh, me? I didn't even think about that. Cause that you just meaning get, goes at home. You just get asked it all the time. And Sam Kelly saying, I'd love to have the skill to be able to drive, although the cost of running and insuring a car could also be quite expensive. Yes, we've got that coming at the end yes. of the month. I, I'm not looking forward to it. I've had a quote already, and... I survived, <laughs> but if it had gone up another couple of quid, I think I would probably have had a heart attack. 
I took a trip to Nottingham on the bus the other day. Yes. And it got me thinking about, of all things, addiction. I can't think why. It, 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 it just popped <laughs> what into my head. going on on the bus? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I want to, I, it's not like I was sitting there observing people partaking in addiction. Mm-hmm. It, it's just something that popped into my mind when I was travelling on the bus. And I'm not talking about serious stuff. Although it was in HMV the other day, right? Mm. What is with all the ganja-related merchandise? You know, there's a couple of T-shirts, there's some yeah. board games and things like that. The only missing thing was the water pipe that's, air quotes, for tobacco. <laughs> yeah. you, you know what I'm on about, dear listener, don't you? Although, I, I must admit, I'm not without my addictions myself. I think everyone has Well, mine's ad- chocolate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, the big one for me, food. You can't get to 20-odd stone without enjoying a meal or two in your life, can you? <laughs> uh, the other one, caffeine. It's yeah. not tea or coffee for me, it's fizzy pop. Mm. And I'm actually getting to the point where I get a headache if I drink the caffeine-free stuff now. Oh, right. So it's a serious addiction. Now. Yeah, it, it is, yeah. some real. I'm going to have some real re- withdrawal problems. Which, considering I, I was on opioids for painkiller not not out of fun or anything dear listener this was proper prescribed for mm. serious back injury that i had i had no withdrawal issues with that at all i'm having withdrawal issues from fizzy fizzy pop <laughs> wow. what's going on there <laughs> although admittedly have you ever seen caffeine free pop it looks a lot posher doesn't it yeah it does because it comes in a gold label yeah, yeah, yeah. Which makes it, which people go, ooh, what's that about? And then they realise and they go, oh, that's a bit rubbish, isn't it? Well, I'm on the decaf coffees and the teas. <laughs> decaf coffees <laughs> and teas. And the other big one is the internet. You cannot get me off it. I mean, we're even on it now. You couldn't listen to more radio on Fashion Town Radio without the internet. So it's a bit of an addiction, that's true. isn't it? It's a real problem, but also a good thing as well. Any addictions you want to confess, Jenny? You've got chocolate in, in I've got chocolate. I guess I've got I've got coffee as well um and sometimes i would say a bit of an addiction to scrolling on particularly facebook oh right. and i can find i've lost an hour or two hours of my time because i've you just don't realize you catch a funny video and then you think oh that's really good so then you go into that person's facebook account and look at the other reels oh, right. that they've done and then you realize you've lost two hours of your time and you'll never get that back you should never be introduced oh. to TikTok if that's the case, because we will never get you off it. So I'm going to open this up to you, dear listener. What is your secret or otherwise addiction? It's time to confess your sins. Although I should probably stress we are not priests. We, we don't have a cathedral to do this in. <laughs> so yes, uh, if you're talking about addiction, then what, what one do you want to confess to? Do get in touch. Playing that one for Louise Mallinson's mum called Anne. Yes. And I'm, I'm going to take a slap on the wrist for that one. For not mentioning that one. I should have mentioned I it. I sorted before. him, Louise. I sorted him out. But that makes it sound like, well, it, we, it was sorted out in the car park. It's a euphemism <laughs> or something like that. There was no visit to the car park. I'm gonna, I will stress that one now, dear listener. Uh, right. Also, yeah. What else have we got going on? We are talking about... Uh, addictions. Addictions, yes. yeah. And uh, a few you've been in touch. Yeah. Well, Ellie Merritt's been in touch to say that... Uh, uh, this is probably mine as well. Her addiction is following all the cats on Facebook, including our cat, Sooty the Solid Radio Cat. Once she starts, her morning's gone. So it's just a morning of cat, 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 yeah. cat. What do you do in the afternoon then, Ellie? I'm, yeah, get in touch. Dogs. <laughs> yeah, dogs. And, and then in the evenings, it's exotic pets. So you, <laughs> you go for tigers and you go for iguanas and things yeah. like that. You, you've got to spread it out for the day. You've got, you've got, you've got to have it. Is otherwise it gets boring if you if you have everything all the time. You've got, yeah. you've, got you've got to look forward to the evenings, haven't you? You have, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm with you, Mark. Uh, on a slightly more serious <laughs> one, uh, Stephen West has been in touch saying, "Please tell Paula I love her, even though I." don't always show it because the amount of pressure stress and grief that we both have at the moment oh yes and the skill i most of all like would be the ability to chill the blank out and calm the blank down (laughs) when the going gets tough i will tell you as somebody that's on the other side of that yeah because i'm I'm sort of the complete opposite you are i'm overly calm yeah you know things could be on fire and falling apart and i'm I'm that cool calm ship in the storm it's fantastic for getting things done Mm. but it takes a lot to for me to feel pressure to feel like I need to get moving on something yeah it's, it's a balancing act you want to you be somewhere in the middle mm. I know what you're thinking there Stephen so it's a very touching message and on the Mother's Day thing uh, Carol has been in touch saying my mummy is no longer with us if you can mention Shirley please yes we've mentioned Shirley yep, yep. Uh, she loved Jim Reeves but if you haven't got him you've got a few other options as well but we have dug into the into the archives and we have managed to find some Jim Reeves 
We will meet her half and free. I'm quite curious. Is, is Cheryl, is, sorry, is Carol Irish? Because I love the way they say mummy because my mum's Irish and she used to call her mum mummy. All right. All the way through, yeah. Uh, I, mommy, mommy, mommy. Mommy's a very mommy. Irish thing. Mommy. And in the, in the North East it becomes yeah. mom, almost like it's mm. American or something mm. like that. It used to be a song you heard all the time, but nowadays it's very rare, isn't it? Jim Reeves' Distant Drums playing that one for Ethel and Carol and the whole family there, Grandma Shirley as well. It's a wee NASA on Bo Radio where you are in charge of the music. Well, your mums are in charge of the music. It is Mother's Day. We're playing your requests, not just to cover the fact that you, you forgot about it completely and it's crept up on you, <laughs> but maybe you've had, you've had that nice day out and you've done all the, the appropriate Mother's Day things and you're, 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 you're taking that extra extra box you're getting the extra brownie points for it there as well uh, also be in touch kate harding whose whose mother's called ethel i'm getting all mixed up now <laughs> i made a mistake right I'm, i'll just give up now <laughs> i'll just give up uh, oh dear. kate harding is his mother ethel uh, who's no longer with us but she'd like but would like westlife you raise me up if possible yes that is certainly one we can do and I've pressed the play button, and it's definitely Westlife, so we're on to off to a good start for you there. And on a slightly different note, because we're we're not just on Mother's Day, because it, it, we, we are leaving you in charge of the music to make sure you can say thank you to your mothers, yeah. and you can pass that message on. Uh, but I also have some patriotic news for you now, right? Any ideas what it is? Um, can I do a guess? Go on, guess what the patriotic news is. When are we talking Oscars? Ooh, that might be coming later. Ooh, patriotic. No, no. no. There's no there, there, there might be patriotic stuff at the Oscars, but I'm not that into celebrity stuff to know who's up for an Oscar or anything like that. Kate's been seen. Kate's the been first seen. photo since. Oh, you mean like Kate and Wills? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because she, she was ill or something, yes, wasn't it? And yeah. she's, she's, she's back into official. Yeah, they got the first family uh, photo that was. Well, I saw that today anyway. It's the first photo release since... That wasn't what I was thinking of, oh, unfortunately. No, no, no. It turns out that we, as Britain, are number two in the world for something with a Central Asian country taking the top spot. Uh, the top spot. The, to- <laughs> the top spot, the top spot. You, you get the idea. And I think, you know, that's a patriotic moment that really calls mm. for the right music. So I need you to stand up, put your hand across your heart for the national anthem. <laughs> Yes, indeed. We are the second most country... Well, second most miserable country in the world. <laughs> Is that what we are? <laughs> that's, that's, what that's what we've apparently done. We are the second most miserable country in the world. And I just realised that is the wrong version in the national anthem. <laughs> what we should really be playing was this one. Which sounds a lot bigger. I still call it God Save the Queen, by the way. I haven't got around to call it God Save the King. But no, we can do better. As the country that's famous for tea and biscuits showcasing our best loot from the empire at the national museum and playing cricket a sport so complicated i still can't tell who's winning <laughs> even though i've had it explained to me many 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 times i still can't figure out who's doing well in cricket we are better than this we should be the number one most miserable country in the world <laughs> We should not be number two to Uzbekistan. No, no. I bet most of you can't even put Uzbekistan on a globe. I can because you showed me where it was. It's bigger than you think it is. It is, yeah. And I've got to ask you, what's the sort of trouble you used to get into as a kid? Scrumping. Scrumping? Yeah. You'll have to explain what scrumping is. Uh, sorry, so we used to go... Uh, again, I think it's having five brothers. We used to like play out with my, my brother's mates and they just used to go over... I won't say where, but they just used to go into, like, places that weren't abandoned but looked abandoned, and you'd just take the crab apples off the tree. Oh, so you were just stealing apples. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I I mean, I I do see people who, they they don't steal apples, but they turn up with bags Mm. at the side of the road, and they're just grabbing all the brambles out of it. Or blackberry picking. Yeah, yeah. You used to do blackberry picking. I, I sort of... Don't have a problem with it when it's only a handful, but when it's, like, full industrial 
they're sitting there with like yeah. a massive tubs that are filling up. It's like, yeah, this is this is getting into funny territory now. It's a bit, we used to call it spirit tapping, but I think people call it knock a door run and stuff, don't they? Chappy, we used to call. Yeah. <laughs> you just chap on the door and run. Yeah, I know what you're on about there. Uh, personally, it just it just occasionally get into fights at school. I never started any. Oh, I was a, a, a bit bullied and whatnot, and I, I used, people used to go, just come up and. Uh, you know the wisecrackers. Mm. They just take a swing at you. I never had and, that. And then, and then I would return fire by slamming them against walls and things like that. I'd, <laughs> I'd have do. like six people holding me back <laughs> so they didn't end up with uh, <laughs> spinal injuries or anything like that. I also remember getting the old, the old sore backside for things, but the details are fuzzy now. <laughs> yeah. Can't remember what that was about. <laughs> but uh, if you were 11, would you consider borrowing your parents' car? No. I wouldn't either. No, no. I'd, I'm more likely to taste the cigarette lighter at that age. <laughs> and I can tell you from experience, it tastes of ouch. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, it, uh, there was a kid stopped on the M1 the other day driving a BMW towing a stolen caravan. Oh, wow. Have you ever done a caravan? I've holiday? never, no. 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 It's cold, it's wet, and you have to clean your own toilet tank out. Right? Ugh. So if they can't put this lad in jail, this 11 year old kid that mm. was st- stealing a, a car in a caravan and running down the M1, mm. we should send him on a two year camping holiday to Skegness. He'll never do it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you know it is the Oscars tonight? Did it? Yes. Have you seen how much these goodie bags are that they're getting as well? The goodie bags? Yeah, apparently uh, everybody that go, attends gets the goodie bags. So what, well, like, it, like it's a kid's party yeah, or something? Yeah, no, like they, these are about £135,000 each, these goodie bags. So it's not just like a slice of cake and a, a deflated balloon no. and a sticker. And a packet of refreshers. No, no, not for these people. I'm trying to imagine what a hundred thirty-five grand's worth of fre- refreshers would look like, and I, I can't, I can't picture <laughs> very it. Very nice. It's very <laughs> difficult. But uh, talking about the Oscars, I can't even remember the last film I saw at the cinema. In all honesty, but I do remember Lord of the Rings. Mm. You ever seen that one? No. It is impossible to sit it's through. Too hard going way, for me. Yeah. Way too long. Obviously, everyone else. When they're talking about the Oscars, we'll be, to, we'll be covering it properly. We'll be talking about the dresses, we'll be talking about music, mm. and all the awards and things like that. So I thought we'd do our own movie awards. But if you're going to do movies, you, you've, got, you've got to have the music for it as well, haven't you? So we've got to get ourselves in the mood to talk about movies, haven't we? So the way to do it is to play the music from the adverts before the films. You need some popcorn now. You need some popcorn. <laughs> the ice cream. Seriously? <laughs> is yeah. that one that pops in Jimmy? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I need some popcorn and some ice cream, is it? <laughs> yeah. It's a bit like Pavel's dog or something like that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so everyone's going to be covering it properly. We're going to do our own movie awards and I've got to start with the most confusing movie. Who do you think I'm going to award the most confusing movie to? Oh, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Not Lord of the Rings. It's The Matrix. I've never so watched it. I, I got lost at Red Pill versus Blue Pill. Never mind when the film gets deeper than that. See, I don't watch films. You don't so watch I don't really know. I can't have a conversation with people about films because I've never watched... I don't really watch films. So when I say Interstellar, which which I'm going to put in second place, you've got no uh, idea. What no idea, no. <laughs> well, to be fair, I've seen Interstellar and I've still no idea what it's about. It's a properly confusing film. Uh, movies that are just way too long. We've talked about Lord of the Rings earlier, but no, it's not going to win it. Uh, I know the Harry Potter films can be quite long. I do start off trying to watch them and end up falling to sleep. <laughs> falling, falling to sleep to the, the Dumbledore ranting on about yeah. something, is it? Is Dumbledore one of the characters in Harry Potter? Yeah, I think he is, yeah. Because I, I was of the age where the books came out. Because I'm roughly the same sort of age as, as, as the actors in the movies, the kids. So it sort of lined up that I read the books at that sort of time. Oh. But I only read, like, the first one. And I sort of gave up. I don't know how many there is now, but... Well, I, I used to think Hermione was called Herrimon because I, <laughs> I'd only ever seen it written down and it's yeah. a weird name. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's not one that most people call their kids. It's become more popular since the yeah. books since and the, the movies. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, see, you see where I'm coming from on yeah. that one, yeah. Uh, it's, no, it's not Lord of the Rings for a movie that's way too long. Children of Men, I'm going to go with. Yeah, I've never seen that either. I kept nodding off for it. Uh, although, admittedly, it was a tiny cinema and it was very warm, so it's kind of mm-hmm. hard to... Even if it's the best film in the world, it's kind of hard to stay awake in those conditions, isn't it? And finally, the most self-indulgent nonsense that claims to be a blockbuster. There are a lot of competitors for this one, in all honesty. But I'm going to have to give it to Quentin Tarantino. I was thinking of the little yellow men that advertise Sky TV. 
Oh, the minions. The minions. Yeah. You, you're going to give that uh, the most self-indulgent nonsense that claims to be a blockbuster. I, 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 I just feel that as a kids' film. It's like, yeah, kids' films are always going to be a bit annoying. They're always yeah. going to be a bit weird like that. I'm going to have to give it to Quentin Tarantino for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I have never regretted spending 99p so much in my life. And I spent that again on the bus here. <laughs> Only apologise for how it's going, dear listener. In case you've not noticed, it is an election year this year, dear listener. Um, and you'll hear all sorts of promises in the build-up, won't you? Mm. You'll hear people going, oh, we'll solve all those problems, we'll do X, we'll do Y, we'll do Z. But you'll hear absolutely nobody dealing with the unimportant issues. And we want to change that. We want to bring... Power to the people! It's part of something we call... <laughs> And this week we are taking a look at the humble fry-up. Don't worry, I'm not looking to get rid of it. You know, it's the national dish of Ingerland. Yes. Spelt with an I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, but if we're going to make, a, a, you know, a part of a national dish, what would you say are the key components of a full English? Sausage, bacon, eggs, mushrooms, fried bread, beans. I don't like tomatoes, but I know some people like tomatoes. They're wrong ones. Hash browns and toast. Because you, you have to have toast and fried bread. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's diabetes the meal, isn't it, basically, isn't it? So, yeah, uh, do you ever have any problems that you encounter in the process of getting these components together and making a full English? Yeah, I can't fry an egg in fry light. If you can fry an egg in fry light, uh, please tell me how to do it because uh, it, you just... You knew enough to spray the whole tin of fry light or bottle of fry light on to get your egg fried. The, the question I've got there is why are you trying to make a healthy full English? It, it, it doesn't exist. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's like trying to say, you know, gravity's working upwards now. It just doesn't work like that, does it? Um, personally, you know, one of the problems I run into if I'm making something like that, it's those packets with the peel here tabs in the corner. I can't get into them. I get cross and just stab them with the scissors. Yeah, exactly. I bet you've got some of those in your fridge right now, dear listener. Go on, stay, walk into your kitchen, have a look, open the fridge, and I bet you'll see at least one or two packets. I've got a little, little peel tab in the yeah. corner that just doesn't work. It's like That's the free Bentos key, where you've got to put the key in in such a way and you've got to turn it at an angle to get your pie tin undone. I can't cope with them either. It's been a long time since I've even thought about very Bentos. <laughs> ne- never mind sticking it in my gob or cooking one of them. <laughs> but the package with the peel here tabs in the corner. Never work. The corner just comes away and yeah. the bacon is still locked in its plastic yeah. prison. So you cannot make the full English. That is not good enough. This is Britain, dear listener. And we should not be resorting to stabbing the packet like barbarians. <laughs> Although I've just called you a barbarian now, do you, haven't I? <laughs> but even I do it as well. Our pledge, as part of the People's Manifesto, will be that peel open packets must work the first time. time. <laughs> Does that sound like a pledge that you could get on board with? Definitely, yes. I bet you can yes. get on board with it as well, dear listener. We're talking about the fact that the Oscars are uh, tonight, even. Yeah, I was, was going to say this week, but it's actually tonight. I think, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, Hank has been such saying the movie Oppenheimer is also from 2023, and it was, according to me, a very good movie. Mm. I haven't seen it yet. No, I haven't seen that. It's on the list to eventually get round to when it's in the bargain basement <laughs> of Blockbusters. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm not one for watching movies the moment they come out. I'll pick them up Too years expensive. later. Yeah, or, or when they go free on the telly with the adverts yes. in between. Yeah, like, yeah, like the Bond films do. Yeah. That's that's ITV's filler for the next year and a half, isn't it? You just stick Bond films on in the afternoon. I don't do Bond films. No, at all. I don't like Bond films. I'm not into action pack movies. I got things like Billy Elliot, isn't it? East is East. That's mine. Bend it like Beckham. That's my kind of film. So you, do you like films that you've enjoyed in the past and you're like, you know what, I'm not trying any more out. I know what I like. Yeah, I know Don't, what I like. Not going to go any further <laughs> than that. So it's, it, it is movie night. And it's, we're also talking about the fact it's Mother's Day, but... It doesn't mean we don't do the usual stuff as well. And mm. the quiz has returned. The quiz I wrote over a decade ago and may have some slightly out-of-date questions on it. This is a very obviously out-of-date question that I'll be asking you. So we just have to imagine that the question was asked when I wrote it. Go on. I think you can manage that. <laughs> yeah. So the question is, what do you receive from the Queen on your 100th birthday? Wow, that's an easy one. It's not what you think it is. It's not what I think it is. It's not. Well, that's me and Stephen all getting it wrong again. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> well, if you think you know what you see from the Queen, it's, it, obviously you don't get anything from the Queen nowadays unless you've got a Ouija board. <laughs> and that's it. And to be honest, she's got better things to do. She's not going. She's not going to answer you if you get, you get in touch on a Ouija board. She's got better things to do. But uh, imagine back at the time when she was still with us. Uh, what did you receive the Queen from the Queen on your hundredth birthday? <laughs> Asking when you turn 100, what does the Queen send you? Mm. Admittedly, this question was little, written a little while ago, but a couple of you have been in touch with answers. Stephen, Jenny, <laughs> and Pond Life 21 as well have all said oh. a telegram, which is the obvious answer that jumps to mind, but mm. <laughs> it's not the right answer. If you think you know, do get in touch. <laughs> Do you get when you turn 100? It used to be from the Queen. I assume it's from the King nowadays. Mm. Uh, a couple of you have been in touch. We've got... Shall Warner, a card for reaching your 100th birthday and your 105th birthday also. I'm going to give you... Woo-hoo. For that one. Uh, also been in touch with uh, Vicky Fairweaver saying a card. Pond Life 21 saying a card. And Sandra Owen saying a certificate, which... Close enough, I'll give it to you as well. And Henk as well, saying the King and Queen concert, send congratulatory messages to those celebrating their 100th, 105th birthday and every year thereafter. And those celebrating their 60th, 65th and 70th wedding anniversaries and every year thereafter. You should apply for a message at least three weeks before the day in case you're getting to that point and you you forgot and you want to get organised there. And apparently his parents got it for their 70th wedding day from the Dutch king and queen who do very much the same thing. So, of course... And the official answer that I had written down was slightly different. Basically, it was a tele-message, not a telegram. So it's Ah. it's generally a card with a message in it nowadays. Can we have half a point? I'm not giving you a point because BT haven't done Telegram since the 80s. <laughs> I blame Stephen. <laughs> so you get something through the post and they call it a telly message. So yeah, a little bit pedantic, but we got there in the end. One of the things we've discovered when we moved into this new bungalow that we're located in right now is a mystery safe, which we've got no idea what is inside it, but we don't know the code either. No. It is bolted to the floor, so we can't take it out and smash it to bits like they do when they're stealing cash machines. <laughs> did you know that's what it did? They, no. they, they steal the cash machines, take them away, and then they take in the parts and get the money out. Uh, uh, oh. It's, it's much easier. They'll just nick the whole machine. It's, <laughs> we can't do that. So we're turning it into a new game. We have to guess the code. We've only got 10,000 combinations to choose from, although we can't really give the contents away if it's too good. Mm, no idea no. what's inside it. chocolate. We have a mystery safe that we've been trying to open. Henk is coming with the first guess for the code, asking, is the code Mother's Day? I've just tried it and... <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not. We've also had what looks like a coded message come through from Sandra Owens yeah. saying the Australian Shepherd has just won Cruft. Is that like code for... Do you think that's the safe code? I don't think it's the safe code, uh, but all I can say to that is tack drosy. What's that? You don't need to know what that means. It's, an important, it's just a message between a couple of people who do, just don't know each other. And no idea what's going on. I tell you about no idea what's going on. Unfortunately, that's about it for a wee natter this week. We will be back next week. <laughs>